Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'll just maybe start where uh, Deputy O'Callaghan left off. Um, Commissioner, you said that you weren't privy to any information about allegations of uh, mistreatment of whistleblowers, that your knowledge was very much based on what was in the public commentary and from what you've heard. But is that statement not contradicted by the fact that legal counsel for one of the whistleblowers wrote directly to you 14 times over a two-year period outlining a litany of uh, direct experiences that he had had in terms of uh, surveillance, uh, intimidation and all the rest of it? Um, Deputy, the, uh, as you will be aware, I'm uh, I precluded from talking about individual cases. But what I can say in general cases, as I have said earlier, each individual's experience is different. We are dealing with each individual separately and as an individual, and indeed with their representatives or their legal teams who raise issues with us, and all of those have been addressed. We are in the process of retaining a professional expert to review all of these. And indeed, our experience to date is because of the, as I say, these are single figure numbers. But nevertheless, each individual's experience is so different that actually what we believe is the professional expert can help us to review our internal structures, our internal policies, and our approach to things. If there's, if there's areas that we can strengthen, we're very opening to strengthen those. But perhaps it is time for a consideration to be given to some type of an independent entity uh, where all of these issues go to and that people can have some uh, reassurance that there is somebody independently looking at all of these matters and then that we make sure that the internal structures are there to strengthen and support individual needs. I have no intention of going into details on any individual cases but my question was is it the case that you receive direct contact on 14 occasions from a legal counsel of one of the whistleblowers stating and giving very specific information, which I won't give here, outlining his negative experiences as a whistleblower. Um, Deputy, again, I am not able in this forum, in a public forum, to go into individual cases. I think it would be grossly unfair to individuals. And, and I'm not asking you to do that, Commissioner. I'm just asking you, could you confirm that you received 14 direct communications from legal counsel in relation to these matters? I think it's a valid question, Chair. Deputy, I have specific uh, obligations under the Protect Disclosures Act as the employer to protect the individuals and to protect the identity of individuals. And I am not in a position to answer any specific questions in relation to any specific individual or any specific correspondence received in relation to an individual other than to say that every individual's case has been treated individually and that we have structures in place to deal with that. Yeah, I'm not asking you, Commissioner, to detail any details about an individual case, but I am perfectly entitled to put a question in terms of, particularly in the context of O'Higgins, of the public assurances that we've got from your offices that the Garda Síochána are a safe and a place for people to come forward with information when that uh, public, I suppose, statement is contradicted by other issues. We've a right to tease that out. And I'd, I'd just like to ask you again, are you saying maybe pose it, well, let's not look at the specific case, but are you uh, perfectly happy to reiterate your statement that you are not privy to any specific allegations involving mistreatment of people who have come forward as whistleblowers? I don't think my answer to Deputy Callaghan was in respect of allegations, because I obviously have heard the public commentary in respect of allegations that have been made. But I don't think it is fair or even just to say that all that one has to do is look at what we have put into place in an effort to support and to support our determination to ensure that people can bring forward, forward facts. And I think the evidence speaks for itself in terms of the structures that have been put in place, in terms of the systems that have been put in place, and in terms of the efforts that have been put in place. But without going into individual cases, the, I cannot go into individual cases, and I'm sure and that you will appreciate has asked that you to, Nobody has asked you to go into individual cases, but there has been a huge amount of public statements, and you've done it again today, to say that you are not privy to any of these complaints, if you like, or more specific examples that are in the public domain. I'm just asking you to either, it's a kind of a yes or no, can you confirm that you are aware or you're not? Because you've said you're not privy to it. My evidence is that you are, but, I mean, if you're telling us you're not, I'll move on. But could you just tell us whether you are or you're not? Well, Deputy, what I did say was that I am not privy to, nor did I approve, nor would I condone 
any campaign of harassment or any campaign to malign any individual employee. So you're not aware of any circumstances where such uh, claims would have been made that hasn't been brought to your attention? That isn't what I'm saying, Deputy. What I'm saying is that I personally was not privy to, nor would I approve, nor would I condone any campaign against any individual. So if you had been made aware of any such allegations, what action would have you, you have taken to deal with that situation? Any, any issues that are brought to our attention by any individual are fully addressed, and that is the case in terms of all of the individuals who have brought matters to their attention, or indeed any member or any representative of any individual, those issues are being addressed in the structures and the process that we have there. As I say, we are in the process of retaining an independent professional expert to review those processes. And it may indeed need to go beyond that, but we can only do what we can do internally and what we have control of. And that is why we have somebody independently being retained to review are there areas that can be strengthened, recognising that individual needs are different. If everything is improving, I wonder, and you've said that the numbers of whistleblowers are, are single figures, could you explain maybe why all of those single figures, uh, uh, five at least, if not more, uh, are presently out sick and have been on protracted sick leave for a period of time because of work-related stress? Deputy, again, and I'm very conscious that we are speaking about single-figure numbers. And even by extension, that could serve to identify individuals. And I am precluded from speaking about individual cases. And as the employer, I have a duty of care to all of the individuals and their circumstances. But there are systems in place to support and to help the individuals concerned. Uh, it's very difficult to get uh, an answer, Chair. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll deal, go back. How many protected disclosures would have been made directly to you as distinct from GSOC? Um, Deputy, again, I don't think that I'm in a position to, under the Protected Disclosures Act, to discuss in public. There is a mechanism where returns are made, and they are made in, a, in accordance with that mechanism. I mean, it is supposed to be a public forum to help. I mean, this module that we have here today is part of a process to deal with oversight and accountability in relation to Angarit Shikana. We've had the oversight bodies in here. They've made observations. They haven't been as reticent, to be honest, in, in their answers. Nobody is asking you to deal with individual cases, but I do think the questions are particularly valid. I mean, maybe, you know, well, if you want to comment on that, you can, but I was there's, say there's nothing wrong with figures. These figures are in the public domain at the end of, of annual reports and all the rest of it. I don't see why you couldn't tell us how many protected disclosures you yourself have received, as distinct from those which have gone to GSOC. Well, perhaps an indication, um, Deputy, is that they are in single-figure numbers. Uh, the number of, of disclosures that have been received by Angarda Shikana. We have put in place two protected disclosures managers. We have put in place a system to support people who wish to come forward and raise issues. Um, I'm not aware of the numbers and uh, the comparison with the numbers that have gone to GSOC, I'm not aware, but what we have done is, since the legislation changed and individuals can go to GSOC or others, we have put in a separate dedicated structure and points of contact with GSOC to ensure that the, uh, the welfare and the support mechanisms that need to be in place to support individuals who wish to bring their complaints to GSOC are put in place. So those systems are there, but we have uh, a structure in place to protect the identities of the individuals who wish to make disclosures and to ensure that they are afforded every support, both from a welfare point of view and from a work point of view. And that is, that is the systems that we have put in place. You are aware that Justice Mary Ellen Ring here two weeks ago stated that she felt that the legislation was insufficient, that while it was uneven and some areas were okay, that in general uh, cooperation was, well, at best uneven, but certainly in the area of protected disclosures and getting relevant information from Angarli Shukana that um, they weren't able to do their job properly because of that lack of cooperation. Uh, are you aware of that situation? Uh, what steps have you taken to address the deficit and I suppose what could be viewed sort of um, frustration of GSOC complaints because of lack of Garda cooperation? Um, yes, Deputy, we're certainly aware of the submissions made by uh, 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 Justice Mary Ellen Ring to the committee and indeed the, the GSOC submissions. And I may, Chair, ask my colleague, um, Assistant Commissioner Corcoran, to come in here. We have put in place dedicated structures and single points of contact with GSOC, but maybe if I deal with it in general, Deputy, it may be helpful. 
So in GSOC's annual report for the 2015 period, they talk about a 93.6%, 93 so almost 94% compliance with requests for information, not just in relation to protected disclosures, but generally. Uh, you know, we have again put mechanisms in place to continuously try to improve that, and my colleague, Assistant Commissioner Corcoran, has recently, as of the 1st of September, taken responsibility for that area. And what we have done separately to that is put in dedicated structures to ensure that if GSOC require any information from us, that that information is available and I can get my colleague to deal with it deeper. In addition to that, in relation to some of the recent commentary, what we have done is my colleague, Deputy Commissioner O'Coulon, has been in contact with the Ombudsman Commission and to make sure that there is uh, engagement and there will be a meeting, I think it's next week, uh, to make sure that there are no blockages in the system because we are determined that any blockages will be unblocked. But certainly the systems and the, and the process that we have in place are there to ensure that that happens as smoothly as possible. And Chair, if it's helpful, my colleague can speak about it. Thanks very much. Uh, yes, I think um, in fairness, I think we must distinguish between uh, the information requests received generally from GSOC and those of protected disclosures. Uh, I think they're, they're not uh, in the same category but in fairness, the, the uh, Commission has very fairly acknowledged the high level of uh, response in accordance with the protocols in place in the context of responses received, and that's in excess of, of, of 90 percent for the, the last number of years. And they have very fairly acknowledged the improvement which that represents. Um, we do accept that 10 years on, the provisions of the 2005 Act uh, uh, that it's appropriate at this time that, that a review take place and that any improvements that can be made in the context of the provisions, especially around um, bureaucratic issues or issues that slow down the process, that they are uh, adequately addressed and we would very much support the opportunity to contribute to that review, which uh, it should it take place. There are, there are a number of issues raised, I think, in, before this committee uh, previously in that respect, and we would certainly, in broad terms, support that review and, and uh, look forward to contributing to it. Thank you, Assistant Commissioner. Deputy Daly, had you any Yeah, well, just, I, I mean, I was a bit of a loss now as to, you know, if, if all these processes are in place, um, the YGSOC and the whistleblowers, I suppose, are not happy. How could you have a contradiction, I suppose, between the, the public statements that you're making about how everything is grand and things are improving and the very direct opposite situation being said by GSOC and the whistleblowers? I mean, I note that you've said you weren't privy to any of uh, those circumstances, but if you weren't privy to it, does that not mean that this is going on behind your back and in a certain sense that your authority is actually being undermined if what you're saying very much in public is being contradicted by the reality on the ground behind the scenes. Well, Deputy, we never said everything is perfect. Far from it. Mm. This is a relatively new process for everybody, not just for Angara Shikana, but for everybody. And I think it's fair to say that everybody is learning. And that is why we've already engaged in a review of our policy. That is why we very much welcome the fact that the authority is also reviewing our policy, our practice and our procedures in terms of what we look forward to any input and indeed we would look forward to any input from the committee. But also in listening to the individuals that have come into the process so far, what we are hearing is that individuals have different experiences and the individual, uh, those individual experiences need to be reflected on and they need to be factored in. And that is why we are in the process of retaining a professional expert to actually look and see where can our processes be strengthened and what further supports can we provide to individuals to meet their individual needs. But what I can say is what we've learned, that every individual's needs, as is the case with victims, every individual's need is different. And that is why that we need to put to strengthen our structures, to strengthen our processes and to ensure. But as I say, in our experience, it may be appropriate that there is some independent entity which actually impartially and objectively receives all of these complaints and then we make sure that we focus on putting in the strength and strengthen the structures and the processes that need to support individuals. Yeah, I would maybe put it to the Commissioner that while everybody is clearly different, um, the similarities are striking, that in every case um, people have reported bullying and intimidation when they made a protected disclosure, and in every instance the individual is out on protracted sick leave. Would that be accurate? 
Well, Deputy, what I can say, in any individual who reports any issues of wrongdoing is fully investigated. And it's investigated either by us or if there's criminal wrongdoing by the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission. And a number of the cases that you are speaking about at the moment are being investigated in a variety of fora, and it would be quite inappropriate for me to comment on them. So in terms of, say, the Minister's public statements that uh, she had contacted you, uh, in the middle of this year, in May of this year, seeking uh, an urgent report about some of these allegations of bullying and harassment of whistleblowers. You're aware of, of the Minister's public statements on that matter and that she's contacted you. Are, have you responded to that communication from the Minister? And if so, when was that response made? I think, Deputy, again, that communications between myself and the Minister in relation to individuals uh, are, again, we're talking about individual cases, and I don't think it's appropriate that I would go into those here. It's a, a matter of, of public record, Commissioner. Um, just very briefly, Chair, in a, a couple of, of latter things at, at, at this stage. Um, the O'Higgins report, the GSOC, um, was sent to GSOC in relation to allegations that two uh, senior officers had been prepared to mislead the, the Commission in relation to uh, evidence about the motivation of Sergeant uh, Morris McCabe. Have you been contacted by GSOC in relation to that investigation? Or? Again, uh, uh, Chair and Deputy, that, that is an investigation that's ongoing by GSOC and I don't believe it would be appropriate that I would comment on the GSOC investigation. Well, you have commented on the Minister's new initiative in relation to the latest uh, protected disclosures. Um, so just in terms of that process, uh, you might comment further and uh, let us know whether you're going to uh, fully cooperate with that, whether all um, electronic equipment in the hands of Ungarda Shikana will be handed over to Justice O'Neill as part of that inquiry. Absolutely, Deputy. What, and what I can say around any GSOC investigation, not just the specific one that you refer to, but any GSOC investigation, indeed any investigation, as always, Ungarda Shikana will fully cooperate and fully assist. In the, Mr Justice O'Neill's review that has been conducted, I am already on record as saying that Ungarda Shikana will of course fully cooperate and will fully assist in whatever way uh, Mr Justice O'Neill requires. Including handing over all technology and inf information? In, in any way that Mr Justice O'Neill requires, Deputy. Just in terms of the last two quick points, Chair, in terms of, of drugs that was mentioned in the report, obviously drugs are an appalling blight on our communities and uh, again while it's not specific it does get to the heart of how on Garda Shikana, uh, deal with um, drugs and there have been in the public domain uh, reports of Garda collusion in the drugs trade uh, confirmed as part of an internal investigation as a result of whistleblower uh, allegations we've had people on the television giving evidence saying that they were fitted up um, I suppose without again asking you the details, but we believe from the media that uh, the internal report, if you like, validated the fact that Garda involvement in the drugs trade actually contributed to a worsening of the drugs problem in a Midlands town. And I suppose my questions on that are, how did the media get that report if the person who made the original uh, complaint hasn't been given a full copy of uh, that report? Uh, is it acceptable? that people to whom those allegations had been made a number of occasions previously took no action on that and are yet very centrally located and continue to be at the height of an organisation which is claiming uh, to deal with change and does not not send a really contradictory signal to people who do come forward with an allegation that people that they went to years ago and made that allegation to and did nothing about it continue to be at the very top of the organisation while your own internal inquiries confirm guard the collusion in, in the horrendous drug trade that's such a blight on our society. So I'm wondering about that and how did it end up uh, in the media? Um, thanks, Deputy. Actually, the investigations are ongoing. Uh, the investigations aren't, as I understand it, as yet concluded. So uh, as soon as those investigations are concluded and once, once due process has taken place, any appropriate action or any appropriate recommendations will be implemented. As you're aware, a number of the investigations are also being conducted by the Ombudsman Commission. And again, as soon as those investigations are concluded, uh, we will await the recommendations of those and appropriate action will be taken. In terms of the leak to the newspapers of the internal report, have you initiated an investigation on that? Or? Well, what we have done, Deputy, is put new structures in place in terms of the, the media. 
and actually you know the structures that we have put in place around our new communication strategy and we have newly appointed people is to make sure that actually in the public interest that, it, that anything that requires to be dealt with with the media is dealt with. I am not aware how that uh, issue came into the media. Um, no, we haven't launched an investigation as yet, but as the investigation progresses, I'm sure it will cover those facts as well, and if there is action needs to be taken, it will be taken. But there's no in investigation into the leaking of that? That's... Well, I'm not sure exactly what part, Deputy, that you're, you're speaking about. Of the internal investigation into the, into the whistleblower allocations in relation? We'll have to look into it, Deputy, because I'm not sure what specific aspect. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I suppose the main things that were flagged in the Sunday Times the last two uh, weeks. If you've been watching prime time yourself, I'm sure, and you, you saw that side of things as well. Well, I suppose, Deputy, there's been a lot of commentary in the media, and, you know, a lot of it is there. I'm not sure what is behind the commentary in the media. And, um, you know, as the investigations progress, we will look at any issues that arise, either in that public commentary or otherwise, and we will make sure that they are fully addressed. But you're confirming that there's been no investigation into the leaking of this information? Well, I'm not sure which specific okay. information. Well, uh, of any, inf any, inf any information in relation to this case and the whistleblower allegations in relation to guard the collusion in the drugs trade? Well, Deputy, there has been several public commentaries in relation to these issues. So I'm not sure what specific aspect, okay. but I'm very happy to follow up with you if you wish to raise a specific I, issue with us. Uh, very happy to follow up on it. I'm talking about the allegations that deal with the internal report in relation to guard the collusion in the drugs trade in and around the Athlone area and the information that appeared in the public domain in relation to that internal investigation. Well, that's something, Deputy, that we can have examined, but as of now, I'm not specifically aware of what okay. the issue is that you're referring to because there is so much public commentary in relation to a number of these issues. It's very difficult to decipher what is what. In no, that's fine. It. It's just these are obviously incredibly serious issues that are utterly shocking for citizens who are the victims of drugs in our society and certainly from the point of view of the media. Um, and, and guard the leaking in other areas and action being taken against people who, who have been alleged to have leaked information. It just seems to be well, a bit of an inconsistency. But look, I'm conscious of that other people want to come in. My, my very last question is, is just in relation to, um, I suppose, and again, it's not specific, but it's about the problem that whistleblowers face, particularly when the complaints that they make are against somebody who is in authority over them. Uh, that that's a very difficult situation to handle. Um, what steps do you recommend in those situations whereby somebody against whom a complaint is made is in a position of authority and has a access, if you like, to undermine uh, that person from an employment point of view, from a disciplinary point of view? Uh, are you aware of any such incidents taking place, uh, an abuse of authority, if you like, by somebody, including um, physical uh, intimidation, are you aware of any allegations in that regard by whistleblowers? Well, again, Deputy, abuse of authority is a very serious allegation, and there are a number of very serious allegations, as you've said yourself earlier, uh, in the media and in public commentary at the moment. And again, you know, we have to allow due process and fair procedure to take place around all of these issues. And any allegations made by any individual will be taken extremely seriously, will be fully investigated, and where appropriate, uh, they will, those issues and those matters will be referred to GSOC. Except you can't give us any details other than to say you're, you're, you're not privy to any of them. What I will say, Deputy, is that any issues, any allegations raised by any individuals will be fully and appropriately investigated and we will we'll await the outcome of those investigations and appropriate actions will be taken when required. Thank you, Deputy Daly. Mick Wallace. Thank you, Pia. Uh, Commissioner, um, you say that everything isn't, mightn't be perfect, but um, in your open address uh, you did paint a very pretty picture as if things were uh, excellent and uh, we, hadn't, we shouldn't be worried about too much. But uh, guarding discipline and underperformance at management levels and senior rank were identified by both the Gearn report and the Garda Inspector report last year. And God knows the O'Higgins report uh, didn't look great for the force either. 
Uh, do you not think, Commissioner, that things aren't quite as rosy as you've painted them? Um, Deputy, I certainly didn't intend to paint a pretty picture because it's far from a pretty picture. It's taken, we've put together a plan which is courageous, ambitious and requires gritty determination to actually deliver and achieve. And what I did say is that we have achieved a considerable amount over the last two years, but it is a journey of work that has to be done. And, you know, cultural change in any organisation is not easy. And it means changing and challenging attitudes and behaviours uh, in a very robust way on occasion and in a way that means that sometimes people may not necessarily like it. But the job of leadership is to make sure that decisions are taken, that decisions are actioned, and that there is a direction that the organisation, and in our case the service, is going in. And that's what we are doing. And that was the, the frame in which I opened my, my opening address. We are on a journey of both cultural renewal, change, modernisation and professionalism, which is going to make the organisation a better service for the communities that we serve. So if I painted a pretty picture, it's not all pretty in the garden yet, nor did we suggest it was. We have a lot of work to do. We have some work done. But I can tell you it has taken some determination to get to even where we are now. And the amount of reforms that have been implemented in the last two and a half years have not taken place without a lot of gritty determination. Well, Minister, or Commissioner, you talk about cultural change. Um, there's a lot of talk about cultural change uh, when the former Commissioner Callanan uh, went and Minister Shatter went. Uh, but a lot of people in your organisation, and we would uh, communicate with a lot of them, uh, would argue that not only has the culture not changed, but if anything, it has deteriorated. And Minister, uh, what do you say to the, uh, the uh, words that many would have put to us that uh, you have promoted a lot of people who complaints have been made about? You've promoted your husband, your bridesmaid, uh, you've surrounded yourself with uh, your supporters uh, rather than concentrate on promoting quality. And when the PSNI was formed, uh, the patent report recommended that uh, if they were serious and they wanted to change the culture in how policing was done in Northern Ireland, they would have to get rid of the hi existing hierarchy. Uh, when you replace uh, Commissioner Callanan, uh, there hasn't really been a serious change to the hierarchy and really things are much like the were, Minister or Commissioner. What do you think of that? Well, Deputy, firstly I'd like to say that, again, there is lots of factual inaccuracies in the uh, public domain. So lest that one of them remain that I promoted my bridesmaid, um, that certainly isn't the case. Um, I was going to say because I didn't have a bridesmaid, but besides that, um, so, so if that is the case, I think it's important that we, we deal with accuracies. Um, so that is certainly not the case. So let me get that one out of the way. And also, I think that it is, um, again, and I will speak my mind, I think it is quite inappropriate that if a member of Angarda Shikana, or a member indeed of any organisation, is defined by the person that they just happen to be associated with, that should be through marriage or otherwise, I don't think that's appropriate. And then let me talk about the generalities of promotion within Angarda Shikana. In April 2014, when I took over from my predecessor, I took over in an interim acting capacity as acting interim commissioner. That remained the situation for nine months while there was an international headhunt competition, first time ever in the history of the state that a commissioner was selected from an international headhunted competition. It was conducted independently. There were a number of international people on the panel. There were a number of international competitors. And, you know, I'm probably very lucky insofar as that I was the person that was chosen through that competition. So I didn't get this job easy, nor would I have expected to get it easy. And actually, it reinforces my confidence in my own ability, but also in the fact that I was chosen as been, by an independent panel as been the per best person suited for the job. So I think that's an important factor to bear in mind. 
In terms of internal promotion competitions, they are also done under very strict guidelines. And for, again, for the information of the committee, the chair and the, the board members are independently uh, chosen from a panel that is, uh, is prepared by the Department of Justice. Members of Angarish Yukana are representative on it, and any competitions are done in accordance with fair procedure and due diligence under the, the authority of the chair of the board. So people that come through those promotion competitions are picked or are selected on the basis of their proven ability when they present the interview. And I think that is a very important aspect that the committee needs to be aware of as well. So there is no such thing as I, or indeed any member of Angarish Shikana, pointing and anointing uh, an individual member to be the next there. You mentioned also in terms of the, the cultural change. Cultural change does not happen overnight. Cultural change takes time. It's about attitudes, it's about behaviours, both internally and externally. And it's about making sure that we have the support to make those cultural changes real and happen. And we have started that. We have started that both with our training of our, new, newly promoted, our, our new students. We have started that with training for all of our, our people right throughout the organisation. And we have started that by introducing civilianisation and new perspectives into the dynamic of what is on Garda Shikana. So I think, Deputy, if you wish, you're very welcome to come to Garda headquarters. You're very welcome to go any place you wish throughout the organisation and actually see firsthand, as indeed as the committee, the changes that are happening in reality. So, so, Commissioner, uh, have you ever taken steps to promote someone who there may have been a complaint uh, made against them by any whistleblower? Sorry, Deputy, I don't understand the question. No, I'm asking, have you ever taken steps to promote someone who may have had allegations made against him by a whistleblower? Deputy, allegations, and such as the allegations that are in the public domain at the moment, are allegations until such time is proven, and they will be properly investigated, and fair, fair procedure and due process has to be afforded to every individual. And also, I think it's a matter of record that actually... I, as Commissioner, do not make appointments and do not make promotions. The Board recommend people as suitable uh, on a panel of promotion and the appointments at senior level are made. So would you, not, uh, would you deny that you have a strong influence in how promotions take place? Deputy, the, in my experience and in my opinion, the promotion process is fair, independent and impartial. Minister, you've said on a number of occasions that publicly that uh, you totally support uh, whistleblowers, you encourage them to come forward and uh, they are very welcome and, uh, and it's good that they uh, take place. But, uh, have you ever met any of the whistleblowers who have made uh, complaints in your tenure or have you ever uh, talked to any of them? Again, Chair and Deputy, I don't think it's appropriate to comment on individual cases. Uh, you talk about the fact that, they're only, that the whistleblowers are present and the, the, um, uh, the disclosures that have come your way uh, that are in single figures. Do you not think, uh, Commissioner, that in a healthy environment uh, we'd have a lot more than single figures uh, in terms of people complaining? Uh, is there a possibility, Commissioner, that, uh, that there's a fear element involved and uh, uh, people are actually afraid to put their head above the parapet given that those who do uh, usually pay a heavy price? Um, Deputy, you know what I have said is that every individual employee has a right and indeed a duty to raise any issues or any concerns that they wish to raise. They don't always have to raise them as protected disclosures and indeed a number of people raise issues which they don't uh, make under protected disclosures, but a healthy environment, environment creates an atmosphere where people can raise issues with their local management or with their local supervisors, and those issues are addressed to their satisfaction. And we do have, uh, we sent to every single employee in Angarda Shikana notification of our protected disclosures policy and telling people and reinforcing to people that right and that entitlement if they do wish. But, you know, of course... What we want to create is an atmosphere where people can raise issues without fear, knowing that they will be fully supported, that they will be listened to, and any issue that they raise addressed. 
Uh, uh, Commissioner, um, uh, we would have read, uh, I'm sure uh, most people here did read the, the complete O'Higgins report. Um, what do you say to uh, the independent commentary that you uh, made a strong effort to undermine the credibility of Morris McCabe in that process? Again, Deputy, as you are aware, um, the O'Higgins Commission and the interactions that I had with my legal team for the O'Higgins Commission, I am precluded from speaking about them, but they do form or the, the issues that were raised uh, in public commentary at the, after the O'Higgins Commission form part of the investigation being conducted by GSOC. Uh, back to the whistleblowers, Commissioner. Uh, one whistleblower said to us, the Garda Commissioner has messed with our lives, has messed with our families. Uh, how would you defend yourself on that? Deputy, I am not in the business, as Garda Commissioner or as Noreen O'Sullivan, in messing with any individual's lives or families. My business is about leading an organisation of men and women who are there to protect and support the community. So that is my comment in relation to that comment. Uh, Commissioner, um, do you know if um, the, f the phone has ever been tapped of anyone who has made a complaint against you? Uh, would you know if uh, the phones of any TDs who may have made uh, criticism uh, on the floor of the doll, have, have their phones ever been tapped? Or, uh, would you be familiar with whether phones were tapped or not? Um, Deputy, there is very robust legislation in place and phones cannot be tapped uh, or phones cannot be intercepted without the appropriate uh, legislation being enforced. And at all times, I am confident and satisfied that the appropriate legislation is at all times enforced. All right, my last question, Commissioner. Um, for a number of years, um, it would have been brought to our attention by a lot of Gardaí uh, of different rank in the country um, that traditionally it has been difficult for a lot of good Gardaí to work their way up through the ranks and that quality has never really uh, been as successful as it should be in actually reaching a uh, high rank as it should be. And people would still argue that that really has, that culture hasn't changed yet. Uh, do you think it has changed? Um, Deputy, what I can say is, and maybe I'm evidence of people that worked hard and worked their way up through the ranks. So I'm very aware of people that worked hard and worked their way up through the ranks. And, you know, again, the processes that have been put in place, not just in the last two years, but right through the time, I believe have put in place with a view to identifying the right people, the suitable people, and the people that, that need to be in place at a particular time. And as I say, in terms of going forward and from here on in, the policing authority has a huge role to play in promotion processes. But I'm satisfied that the processes that are in place and have been in place through the years identify people, uh, identify the right people. And also, I am aware of people who have worked their way up uh, through the ranks. Oh, sorry, just speaking of the police authority and promotions, you, you do realise that uh, Jocelyn Feely complained, uh, expressed her disappointment when she was in here, that she actually had no role in the latest <coughs> round of promotions that uh, took place. I, th I think the chairperson deputy also indicated that not alone had I uh, raised the critical gaps that we had in and that we continue to have in senior management ranks with the authority, but that I had raised it both in public and private at the authority meetings. So at all times the authority were aware and will continue to be aware indeed of the critical gaps that we have in management structures at all levels throughout the organisation. Was, was she inaccurate in saying that she didn't have a role in who was promoted? Uh, Deputy, the processes and the legislation, the regulations to enact those processes uh, is expected to be in place before the end of the year and at that stage uh, the authority absolutely will. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Wall
People. Deputy Wallace, Deputy Jonathan O'Brien. Thank you, Chair. And can I also be associated with the marks of Deputy Brophy at the outset? Um, Commissioner, just following up on the previous two, uh, are you aware of any whistleblowers being put under surveillance? Uh, Deputy First, I'd like to thank you for your association with Deputy Brophy's comments. Um, am I aware of any whistleblowers being put under surveillance? Absolutely not, Deputy. Are you aware of any intelligence files being opened in relation to whistleblowers? Deputy, I'm aware of suggestions in the media and in public commentary, uh, but I am personally not aware. Okay. You spoke um, in relation to electronic materials which will be handed over if uh, Justice O'Neill uh, requires it. Um, can I ask, um, is it one, two or three phones which were confiscated from the whistleblower? Um, I don't think it's appropriate. We have a number of ongoing live investigations, and I don't think it's appropriate, uh, Deputy, to speak about individual investigations. But will they be handed over? Absolutely. Every assistance and any requirement of Mr Justice O'Neill will be fully met by Angarda Shikana. And if there are intelligence files um, in relation to whistleblowers, will they also be handed over? Uh, Deputy, I believe there are no intelligence files, but if, uh, if Mr Justice O'Neill requires any access to any area of Angarda Shikana, he will be made fully aware, or he will be given full access. Will you um, undertake to find out if there are any intelligence files in relation to whistleblowers? I am not aware of any intelligence files, Deputy. Will you ask if there are any intelligence files? Uh, I can certainly ask, but there are, we do not. And I, mis I must say this categorically. Protected disclosures are a relatively new phenomena. We do not keep intelligence files. I hope you have heard from my colleagues here today. We have enough activities uh, to keep us very busy in creating intelligence files on people who are causing harm to communities. Um, are you aware of the content of the meeting between Commissioner Callaghan and Deputy John McGuinness? Deputy, the first I became aware of that meeting, of the fact that even a meeting took place, was in the media. I am not aware, uh, and I have not been aware up to reading it in the media, of any interaction between Deputy Commissioner, or sorry, former Commissioner Callanan and Deputy McGuinness in a car park. So you're not aware of any content which was discussed? Absolutely at that not. Meeting? Okay. Have you considered temporarily stepping aside as Commissioner while Justice O'Neill carries out his review, given that there are a number of allegations that you had knowledge of a campaign to discredit a whistleblower? Well, firstly, Deputy, what I will do is reiterate my statement. I was not privy to, nor did I approve, nor would I condone any campaign against any individual. My job of work is the job of work I've outlined here to the Committee today, is to lead on Garda Shikana through a time of very significant change. At the same time as doing that, my job is also to provide strategic leadership in delivering a policing and security service that protects our communities. And that's where my focus remains. And the final question is, um, if you're not aware of any intelligence files or whistleblowers being put under surveillance, does that also mean that you're not aware of any whistleblowers um, being put under surveillance using Pulse? Deputy, I am not aware of any campaign, and I would not approve of any campaign, to deliberately target any individual other than the types of individuals and the types of criminals that we were talking about here earlier in our address to the Commission. Thank you, Deputy O'Brien. Uh, Senator Lorraine Clifford-Lee. Thank you, Chairman. And um, like my colleagues, I'd like to be associated